who, and B, it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but it had the best logo in all of Hunt. Yeah, but I mean, they, you fall now. Who's going to yell for uh, me? <laughs> Crossover. You've got streams yeah. being crossed. You've right. got Quidditch teams you that legit play that were inspired by a fantasy novel. So, you know, sports can be nerdy as fuck, yes. And let's be clear. The single nerdiest thing is not, in, not generally in this room, which is basketball statistics. <laughs> Baseball. Basketball statistics. Basketball statistics have conferences. Right? There are, there, are, there are stat conferences, and stat eds are geekier than anybody in this room. So, so there's, a, there's a track here that's not just obsessiveness, but also exactly what Laura said, which is those guys aren't respected by actual basketball players. Right? They make themselves the underdogs. That's right, they pulled themselves out of the Jacques community. The Jacques community. <laughs> They're all underwater explorers. <laughs> so you can do this in any field. But, but wait, are we are, are we trying to to universally uh, uh, define nerddom, or are we trying to establish a simple curriculum or basic talking points to make her conversant in part. like these basic avenues of nerddom as largely represented in this room? Well, well it's initially supposed to be the latter, but honestly, the, the, what we've been doing is possibly a little more interesting. <laughs> and part of the issue that we're dealing with is that there cannot be a single curriculum. Because there, there's been the attempt for years upon years upon years to, to establish that there is this, this one true nerddom. And, and that one true nerddom has become increasingly defined and rarefied and narrowed down to the point that half the people in this room don't qualify. And you know, well, you're not. Honestly, I'm the only true nerd here. <laughs> well, Which is why we're going to have to go and drop you into the fires of mountain. <laughs> but, but you know, the thing is, I am a black woman who writes fantasy novels. Mm -hmm. That is about as weird as it gets, and I am a nerd like nobody's business. And yet I constantly have to defend and, and establish my credentials to be in a space like this. Because periodically I got people who want to challenge me on whether oh, Spock did what and blah blah blah. Um, and and you see you see again and again people trying to challenge each other or trying to challenge those that they perceive as outsiders. Um, they want to codify and narrow down and harden the boundaries of what nerddom is. Yeah. And the thing is, nerddom is inherently fuzzy boundary. It's supposed to be fuzzy boundary. This is. Yeah, it should be open. These are the people who who can't find space in the mainstream. That should be lots and lots of people. That should not be a small codified group. Of people. What, what's weird about nerddom is that uh, first off, applaud. Yes. It's a you know a, across all the different genres that it, it manifests in. <laughs> Nerddom is at once supposed to be as comforting as a lot of pop culture is to people because it's a distraction from their everyday lives, and it also is supposed to be challenging at the same time. And that's a weird <clears throat> friction between what science fiction, fantasy, comic books, the, the things that we love and generally define as nerd do is that they both, like, you hear your friends that you love, but then also are going to give you some challenging ideas. Uh, and oh, I'm sorry, Paul. Do you need to take a phone call? <laughs> do you still have that poor crew member's phone? <laughs> no. Just turn it into the office, you weirdo. Yeah, I'm just, what are you doing? I, I've been crank calling the captain all night long. <laughs> I actually do have to run off and, and start getting things ready for comedy night, so I'm going to turn over the pen to Matt Fraction. And what about the microphone? You can give the microphone, the I'm going to give him the microphone. Uh, should I just tear this thing up? No, no, yes. no, no, we're not. No, 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 no. So we, we'll solve this mess. It's a living document. You guys, you guys have 20, 24 minutes. Okay, so it's all this. This, um, well, well, wait, there's a, there's, a, there's, okay, so I'm going to be the jackass. Um, there is certainly lots of acceptance of the principle that you can love whatever you love. I think that's fantastic. But in this room, there is a core curriculum, right? There is a sense that we all, all, 
know Star Wars, we all know Star Trek, we all know, at least to a certain level, we all know Harry Potter, we all know, um, and where does Blake Seven figure into this? <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, like, like, there's not, while there's a definition of nerd that's great, which is love what you love, there is also a community of nerds that love some very familiar things, right? And so, ignoring that in the discussion means that what we get is, Amy, you're, you're a five, right? You're a five on that scale. And you don't feel you're a five. It feels wrong. Yeah. So you have to go somewhere. You have to say um, at least that you have to watch Star Trek once. There's got to be a base code. Yeah. So let's. And, and, and it's not, but, but gatekeeping is absolutely a problem. But I think I think saying um, these are the things that we love and let us tell you about them, and perhaps you will love them too. And here are some things you might want to know that will make it easier for you to interact in these circles isn't really gatekeeping, it's bringing yeah, you, it's recruiting. Right, right. So let's, let's actually, we got to have some uh, time for the audience, and, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you, Mike, for last. Okay. So let's let's start, let's just get a little list together. You want to, do you have anything, Kelly, that you, you want to throw out that I can write down for Amy to, to check out? Uh, uh, superhero Matt Fraction's Hawkeye. Yes, yeah. I'm biased, but it's so good! Straight up comic books. Uh, uh, I would look at uh, a comic book called Stumptown by Greg Rucka, which is a, which, which is, which, which is a, a private eye book set in Portland, uh, which I'm a fan of, uh, but very, very much in the wheelhouse of, uh, of your last sort of bingery. Excellent. Now, are these books, are these comic books that are that she can walk into a room and say, "I know these," and people will embrace her as a nerd based on that knowledge? I think they're going to be people everywhere that like, you're a girl, you don't read comics, right? I think they're going to be people that say, you oh, you read a Marvel comic, that's not comics, or you, you know, I think but, okay, so they're going to be, be dicks everywhere. Rather than a reading list for comics, it would be more like, here's what you need to know. There's DC, there's Marvel, there's Image, and then there's the rest of them. DC and Marvel are shared universe superhero books. DC is was started by sci-fi guys. It's it's uh, gods on high looking down. Marvel was started by guys who couldn't work anywhere else, and it's street level guys looking up. Those are the big differences there. That's the greatest book I've read all year. What you just said. <laughs> and that's actually Max. I I should I'm repeating his line. Okay. Um, I would say the, the, the science fiction and fantasy field has some really great places to start, which are the Hugo and Nebula lists. Yes. Except last year's Hugo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you more about that one. You Just can read the books. You Obviously. And my books are in conversation with the rest of the genre. It's a better idea to start somewhere else, honestly. I would not recommend my books as a starting point, no. no. I would recommend something like Anne Buy Mullins. them, but don't read them. <laughs> Later. 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 But I would recommend is, is, okay, so start with the Nebula list for like maybe the last five years with the, the just the Nebula list for the last five years. Let's avoid the Hugo discussion entirely for now. Um, so start with that. Once you've done that, then you can read my books. Um, and, but if you want a, a recent example of what you should, what the, the, the field is doing now and what kind of everybody's talking about right now, I would start with the ancillary. Um, and, yeah. Oh God, what's the name of the series? The Imperial Ratch. The Imperial Ratch Trilogy by Anne Leckie. First book of which is Ancillary Justice. Justice. Ancillary so, justice. Yeah. yeah. The fact that a bunch of people filled in your sentence for you yes. is a clear indicator yes. that you're on the right track. Yes. John, can you give us uh, something from uh, film and or television? No, I'm just here to talk about Hamilton. <laughs> I would listen. I would listen to Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> and then call me so we can talk about it. I've seen it twice. I've seen it. Well, listen, listen to it again with me tonight. 
Hamilton party in your room. Okay, my, 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 uh, my son decided not to go parasailing with me yesterday, and so I just brought my earbuds and was listening to Hamilton. And at one point was wandering around this island having parasailed and lost my family. Not totally minding. And someone stopped me like, oh, oh are you okay? Are you, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I was listening to Hamilton. And they're like, it's so good! <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me that you were listening to Hamilton while Paris and I, uh, I would have. There was a dude with me, and I thought it would be rude. Well done. Now, uh, before we turn this over to the audience... Uh, what, Mike, what about Mike? He's covered. Mike has something very special planned. Uh, yes. Mike, uh, Andy, you might be interested to know that the, another level that I think uh, uh, qualifies you for nerddom is um, your interest in puzzles. Mike, uh, Mike. How does cryptic crossword? Cryptic, so, well, yeah. let's, let's, let's start there. So tell us about crypt, your cryptic crossword. Well, I mean, you can't... Okay, so everyone knows what a crossword puzzle is. Approximately <laughs> one-eighth of one percent of the population knows what a cryptic crossword is, right? So cryptic crossword comes from the British crossword style, which involves anagrams and, and uh, hidden words and transposals and all sorts of other crazy things crazy nonsense, and very few people can do them, and so since you do them, you're geekier than anyone uh, in the field, right? So, so on a puzzle level, you're on a 10 on that so, so this is our, that's our first uh, decade DC. Yeah. That's our first decade DC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, we do the cryptic crosswords, but there is, there is a game that you have never played as far there, as I know. There, yeah. And uh, I'm wondering, if Mike, if we can set up. Well, a I'm curious. Brief, so, uh, I mean, there are some. Like I said, there should be some cultural touchstones. There should be Star Trek. There should be Harry Potter. There should be lots of things. There should be Dungeons and Dragons. He's a oh my God. Uh, <laughs> constructionist. <laughs> I, I am the living incarnation of Anton and Scalia. <laughs> <laughs> to do one thing, and I'm going to do it. Okay. Um, so, I'm very frightened right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're about to be jumped in. Uh, well, we've, all put, we've, all, put, we've, all, we've all filled pillowcases with 20 seconds. no hazing with the really shit out of you. It doesn't leave a mark. It's great. The person came to me and said he wanted to fix you. I don't think he used those words. Was uh, that you hadn't played Dungeons and Dragons, which seems a shame. So I made some characters. Oh my god. I actually had a black one. I actually have a black one. I'm pretty sure I have this outfit at home. Yeah. Why, why, is my, why is my character white? That seems a little on the nose. It does seem. <laughs> have you met us? <laughs> so you, uh, yeah. So I'm a barbarian. So yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Tell them, tell them who you are. Go ahead, John. You want to start? I'm Father Clementine. <laughs> I'm a 13th level human cleric. Again, very human normal. Right on the nose. Yeah. So my spell is to spell magic. <laughs> my magic is bank magic disappear. <laughs> my saving throw is negative 10. Kelly Sue. I am Crumco the Loud. I am a 12th level human barbarian. My weapon is a plus two axe of death. I fucking love this. Oh my god. <laughs> my saving throw of minus 11. Okay. Annalisa Elvenstone, 13th level elf ranger. Weapon plus eight eye poking. Epi? I can't. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You do crosswords and you don't know epi? <laughs> <laughs> You can write it. You don't have to say it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 
was an oral crossword. <laughs> 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 Holy shit, wait a second, wait a second. An oral crossword. Laura? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've changed my white male paladin well into a black woman. You can't tell because it's, uh, yeah. it's curly hair. Yeah. Um, so she's got some. She's got. She's yes. got some decent shoes. Nice shoes. She's got a petty going on under the shoes. You can't tell. Anyway, um, so she is sir. Mm, well, whatever you want. Lady. Lady. She is sir. Yeah, she, is. she is sir Cavalcade, the true 14th level human paladin. With weapon plus five holy sword saving throw minus twelve. I'm Alfonso the Strange, a fifteenth level gnome sorcerer, good doy. Uh, my spell is a fireball, which is a ten d six of saving throw negative thirteen minus thirteen, depending on uh, how you prefer to say. Indeed. So Dungeons and Dragons is a role playing game, I assume, and so uh, this wouldn't work if we didn't actually play in character. So, um... What? Yeah. Does that mean... It just means I you don't must understand. In, you must embody the character. You must... You must... The sexy elf? Yeah, sure. But well, well, we don't have alignments. Oh, that's true. We don't have any alignments. We can't do this. Well, I we also have ten minutes, so we have to be... <laughs> you don't know, I might decide to be a chaotic neutral paladin. <laughs> Oh, now, now purity tests come in? <laughs> <laughs> Look, and you can't handle that. Okay, so, um, sure. So, uh, you're in a dungeon. Oh, no! <laughs> See? Role play. You can do that. Um, Wait, this requires acting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my it requires God. playing, playing, not acting. Yeah. Playing. That's pretty cool. Okay, fair enough. I'm going to ask you that. Amy, just play yourself. Uh, oh, oh. An <laughs> angry oh. elf. <laughs> God damn it, get me out of this dungeon. <laughs> so I poke the cleric in his eye with my other <laughs> So Dungeons and Dragons also uh, has a key element, which is that you must have adversaries. Um, so I will play one. Uh, I will play the classic adversary of Dungeons and Dragons, the Beholder. Um, yes. The Beholder is a giant... You're going to start with that, man. Yes. Huh. The, 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 How are you going to start with that? You're super powerful characters. I stand it with my sword. That's how you do it. That's great. So uh, I need some help. Uh, can I have uh, five more? Can you just stand up for a second? Come, come join come join Maybe Doom. Maybe five people, five people, please. Doom's all right. We only have five minutes, so let's get a lot of ideas. Very crazy. Amy, you decided to stand behind me. Stand behind me and pretend to be my eye stalks. Just wave your hands in the air. Okay? All right, so I'm a scary mushroom. Thank you. And I have a song. I can honestly say I've never seen anything more terrible. Okay, so, um, how this works, right now. how this works is, can I have a 20-sided die that's there? Sure. Thank you. It would be amazing, by the way, if Ted was just gone. No, no. <laughs> 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 it's just dropping this bomb and Okay, me. so, each of you make a saving throw against the disintegration ray that I'm going to, uh, okay, so what did you get? I got a 14. Subtract your, your saving throw? Yep. So what'd you get? I got a 1. Got a 1, okay, you're disintegrated. <laughs> Uh, I two. Okay, so you're disintegrated. <laughs> um, what What'd you get? Eight. What, what's your bonus? I got plus twelve. You got a twenty! <laughs> you got eight, you got you didn't, you didn't no, you're fine. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh you're disintegrated. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, you're just disintegrated. <laughs> So, and now you need to, now you need to poke me in the eye. Um, so, I have all these eyes. You have to roll. You have to roll the die. I love your beard. You don't, you don't understand what you get. He actually knows how to hit people. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Nine. Nine plus what? 
I'm not sure how this, this works. Is a, going down a plus eight. What makes this a great oh nerd show is yeah. that you're blocking the audience. I know, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> But she ain't really so, believe you would have done And it. so you succeed and you kill the beholder. You are, you are <laughs> so if you play Dungeons and Dragons, I don't see how you cannot be a nerd. Oh my god, you did it. We did it. We all did it. We all did it. I apologize for actually don't have any time for questions. We got jumped in. Or, I really do apologize. I thought it would be nice to, to have some heated back and forth about that, but you, we will be walking around the boat, so please oh, yeah. feel free to heatedly engage uh, about those things. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you, Matt and Kosu. Thank you, Nora. Thank you, John. Please welcome Amy.